comes to the history, usually patients come to the ophthalmology OPD or ophthalmology clinic with complaints of ocular symptoms like redness in the eye, watering or discharge or there are some who come for a follow-up. So there was diminution of vision, a cataract surgery was done for them and they are now coming for the follow-up of the cataract surgery and some just require a routine examination and have come for a refraction. Usually if you come across patients like this, after 40 they will come for a near glass prescription because they find it difficult to read the newspaper. Children who are making repeated errors in their classroom while jotting down the notes from the blackboard, they also have complaints and they also come for refractive error correction. So this is the most common uh, three scenarios in which the patients would present to an ophthalmology OPD. So you need to organize the history the patients give. Most of the things are relevant, but some can be irrelevant. It is important for you to sieve out the irrelevant details to be able to stay on your course for making the correct diagnosis. So you need to know the personal data of the patient, the presenting complaints, the history of presenting complaints. Was there anything similar to the past ocular history, history of any medications which the patient took for the ocular disorder, any medical history, drug history, allergic history, family as well as social history. So we'll look at each of these components individually. When we talk of personal data, if the patient is registered in the hospital where you're working, there would be a ID for the patient or if the patient is in a particular clinic, they will have a clinic file number. Then you must note down the correct name and spellings of the patient's name, age, sex, the marital status, the residence, are they from a rural, semi-urban or an urban area and the contact details. Now, what is the relevance of all this? This looks like basic demographic data, but it goes way more than that. The patient's follow-up and case tracing can happen. Say, for example, I'm treating a patient of acute angle closure glaucoma. The patient had presented to me with 60 millimeters of mercury intraocular pressure. I gave them certain drugs. Since the cornea was steamy, I could not do a laser peripheral iridotomy and I told the patient to visit me two days down the line. Two days later, there is no sign of the patient. I'm really concerned as to what has happened to them and I don't want their optic nerve to be subjected to persistently high intraocular pressure. So I know how to track the patient. I take out the patient's file, call up the patient and they agree to come to the clinic and get a laser iridotomy done. The location where the patient is living sometimes gives a cue to the diagnosis. So if I'm dealing with a farmer who is in a rural area, so he's exposed to dust and sunlight. And if he has a pterygium, I know what are the causative factors that have resulted into the pterygium. And similarly, there are many more diseases which give you a cue. For example, listeria is a bacteria which is more likely seen in animal handlers. So the occupation also gives you a cue as regards the diagnostic abilities. If there is any eventuality, the patient's relatives can be notified if you have the address details. And especially in research, when you're doing retrospective study, then you can always open the file. If you need some extra information, you can call the patient and re-examine them. We must ensure that the demographic data is good quality and we don't really leave any blank columns in this sheet. When we talk of presenting complaints, we ask the patient what is the main reason for their visit to the hospital. We ask them if it's only the right or the left eye that is affected or do they have complaint in both the eyes. If they have complaint in both the eyes, did this complaint start simultaneously or did one eye precede the other? There are some notations that we use to write the uh, findings on our sheet. OD refers to right eye and it means oculus dextrous. OS refers to the left eye and it stands for oculus sinister. And OU refers to both eyes. We must always specify the duration. When we talk of duration, 
if you tell me that this happened on 25th september in this year and then on 4th october this happened and on 9th october this happened i'm likely to lose track of what you are saying so always mention the duration in terms of weeks or days or years so that makes it easy to correlate the complaints when you ask the history of presenting complaints briefly explore and develop the timeline for how the patient's eye behaved so if say for example in right eye the patient had redness and watering since a week the watering and redness increased 2 days after it started then 3 days later it started to decrease but when it started to decrease in the right eye at the same time point it started developing in the left eye so you track down the course of the uh, symptoms in either of the eyes be concise be focused and be chronological so whatever happens first needs to be mentioned when did the problem begin what happened how was the progression whether one or both eyes were affected what was the treatment that the patient received from a local doctor what were the aggravating or relieving factors and the course of symptoms the visual symptoms that patients usually face include blurred vision double vision or diplopia their inability to read small print which is called as press biopia sometimes they complain of crowding of letters when they are reading headache can be there which can be dull or sharp shooting and that can give you a pointer towards the uh, entity that would have resulted in headache so if you have a dull boring kind of a headache it could be because of um, benign idiopathic intracranial hypertension asthenopia that means uh, the patients feel exhausted so if the patient is working on computers for about 8 to 10 hours a day then they have digital eye strain so whatever their occupation can give you a cue to the uh, causes that the patient is having for headache or asthenopia or sometimes they come to you with complaints of flashes and floaters it can be of sudden onset or they can be there for a very long time they are more perceivable when the patient goes out in the sunlight the patient can have redness which can be localized or diffuse it can be associated with itching and there can be pain pain can be mild moderate or severe it can be dull or sharp shooting if there is discharge then the nature of discharge needs to be noted is it more is it watery is it mucoid mucopurulent or purulent is it ropey in nature is there watering that is happening is it off and on or persistent and if there is any abnormal appearance of the eye and its associated adnexa when we talk of past ocular history we want to know is the patient using spectacles or contact lenses and if they are when was the last time these were checked any other ocular medications that the patient is taking any previous history of laser or surgery in one or both the eyes in medical history we are concerned about chronic disorders and most elderly have one or the other in the form of diabetes mellitus hypertension coronary artery disease or uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and some may have collagen vascular diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or sle and therefore they can have manifestations in the eye which sometimes can help catch the diagnosis when we talk of drug history the drugs should be noted and the duration since they are being taken must also be asked beta blockers anticoagulants steroids beat inhalers beat an ointment or tablets antihypertensive drugs hypoglycemic agents oral as well as as insulin or anti tubercular drugs these are the common drugs that have ocular manifestations so these must be dug out the history and if there is any drug allergy we must note that down drug allergies should be noted down with red on the card so that it is easy to pick that finding one must ask positive family history for disorders such as myopia glaucoma squint and some intraocular tumor such as retinoblastoma and if there is any history of blindness in the family social history that is relevant includes the occupation whether the patient is an alcoholic or a smoker 
what type of diet they take that gives you a cue to nutritional deficiencies, the vaccination status is important especially in children and how the children are performing at school. If they have not been faring well for a while, it gives you a cue maybe they have poor vision and because of that they are not able to see what's happening in the class on the blackboard and they are not able to write it down properly in the notebooks. So when we examine the patient, we look at the Ednexa. When I use the word Ednexa, it's a composite term that includes the orbital rim, the eyebrows, the eyelids and the eyelashes. Then we look at the anterior segment. That means we are going to look at the conjunctiva, the cornea, the uh, anterior chamber, the iris, the pupil and the lens. Posterior segment or fundus includes having a look at the optic disc, the macula as well as the rest of the retina. We need to look all the way till the extreme periphery to catch hold of any retinal holes, tears so that we can explain the causes of flashes as well as floaters of recent onset. So once we have dug out all these features in the history, now it's a time to look at the ocular vitals and the most vital thing to look at is visual equity.